13 thanks Duart Film Laboratories and Duart Video for their special assistance in making independent focus possible.
So yeah, Alcatraz straight across there with the lights, you know? Yeah. Can't see one that we're gonna swim off of it. Doesn't look that far to either side. English Channel's got to be wider than that, but old men swim that, women, young kids. I don't see why some convict couldn't have made it one side or the other. Look, I just come out here to be alone. I'm trying to be pushing. If you got time for a cup of coffee, I'm buying it. I could have lied to him, I suppose. I could have said, hey, I wanted to jump and you're just getting in the way. I could have told him that. But I'm no good at lying. It's true. I wasn't feeling any too good, but I didn't really want to jump. I just wanted to think so. Sometimes when I think how many people there are and how many stories, God, so many stories, it makes me kind of scared in some way, kind of sad. I don't know why, but with all these people, it's funny how lonely you can get sometimes. I guess I was glad he actually did something. It's weird. The same day, the same time we were out there making this film, a woman really did jump off that bridge. Some German tourist. There was a story in the paper the next day. I don't remember her name. Path only. 
Let's go down there and see what's happening. Steel worker. Oh, yeah? When I was in the service, I hooked up with a couple of Mohawks. You know anything about Mohawk Indians? Guys that do that. You mean with the haircuts? No, those are punk rockers. Oh. <laughs> I guess they did wear those originally, but these are the guys that work high steel. They oh, work yeah? up on skyscrapers, up on the girders. Where's on the that? Plant. Well, I guess primarily New York City, but they work up on the high girders, throwing rivets, and I met these two guys in the service. 
their cousins they enlisted together and they said white men couldn't do it but I managed to be tough enough pale face to try it so it's real simple actually it's just that you're so high up there I'd, all I'd do is heat up the girders red hot and then pitch them Ladies and gentlemen, what you're seeing on the screen before you is a reflection of what's happening outside at this very moment. The camera was invented by Leonardo da Vinci over 500 years ago, and this is a replica of his original machine built in the early part of the 16th century. It's called the Camera Obscura, and there are only about six of them left in the world, so it's quite rare. When Leonardo first invented his camera obscura, people claimed that he was in league with the devil and had created a magical machine that could tell the past, the present, and the future. Because it shows us what's outside, and will all be outside in the future, perhaps you can understand how people back in the dark ages, before television, movies, or electricity, might have believed that the camera obscura was witchcraft. The camera was first used by artists and astronomers. The artists would lay their paper or their canvas on the surface of these instruments and draw the object projected thereon, thus getting a copy, just like painting by the numbers. Astronomers would chart the course of the stars. Copernicus used his camera obscura to prove the world was not the center of the universe. Each night, at a certain hour, he would put a pin in his camera where the stars were at. The next night, at precisely the same moment, he'd add another pin to where that star had moved. And the following night, another, and the next, still another, until finally, at the end of a period, he had a whole line of pins showing where that star had been on each consecutive night. And with this instrument, he proved that not all the stars revolve around the Earth. For that, his reward was to be exiled. One of Leonardo's students was tried for heresy, for building a camera obscura, we're told. And Leonardo himself, being the genius he was, put all of his notes in mirror writing, and they weren't translated until 300 years after his death. The camera obscura was used for hundreds of years before George Eastman invented film in 1894. Mr. Eastman also pioneered the mass marketing of his simple box camera, which made it possible for anyone to take a picture. Today, there's a new kind of three-dimensional photography. It's called holography, and means the whole picture, and was discovered in 1947 by Dr. Dennis Gabor, who received the Nobel Prize in Physics for his invention. Holograms are produced with laser beams under laboratory conditions. 
the holograms you are about to see displayed in the camera were produced by experimenters at the laboratories of the Multiplex Company here in San Francisco. Stay as long as you like, and if you have any questions, we'll be happy to try to answer them as you leave through the exit. Enjoy the show. Young. Didn't have a car, didn't have a surfboard. <laughs> you know, didn't have any money. It happens like that. Did you? No, I'd, they're mostly in the east, they don't surf there. No, no. surf. They sure <laughs> Pretty don't. Dull with ocean because it's all just flat sandy beaches. Yeah. You do any other water sports or anything? I used like, to swim a lot. That sounds like California. Yeah, I still swim a lot. In pools or in the ocean? Yeah, it's too cold up here in the ocean. I'd like to, but it's just too cold. It's freezing. Yeah, I'm getting a little stiff. Oh. What about wetsuits? That's all the people surfing over there. Is that a recent development? I have wetsuits 10 years ago. I uh know. -huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say something? Did I say something dumb? I didn't mean it.
want to go make love? Sure. You don't have horses in the And so, like most people, they told each other stories. Stories like most that left things forgotten out. And other things remembered well, a bit blown up. Yes, it's an 8 o'clock show that has open at 7.30. OK. Most people, they did not tell their stories well. charge you anything. What you do is you pay her what you think the session is worth. So if you can't afford anything, you don't pay her anything. If you can afford 300 bucks, like this one lady could, then you give her 300 bucks. But then and what she, do you end up on the other side? You, you mean, end up you, rebirthed and she ends up poor. But like what part of you is rebirthed? You mean be All of you. I mean, it's a, you don't know about rebirth. I, I don't know anything oh. about it. It started out with this guy who was rebirthing in a hot tub. And the idea being is the water reminds you. Then get to the point where you can release all that and let uh, the life energy throw, flow through you. But you just do it one time? Like you just go into well, one session? And she didn't encourage me to come back. I don't think I paid her on that really quick. Because <laughs> the rebirthers say it usually takes about 10 times. <laughs> so you can. Oh, Who invited the fleet, though? I believe Tom. Tom Barlett. <laughs> uh -huh. as, as we can see here, we I have see. a good what, 20 members of the fleet. Oh, here. these are all not these are all individuals. Not a flotilla. They were, they were officers' they were wives. They were officers' wives and children. Yes. Oh, that's sad. All by themselves. Well, they were with other officers' wives and children, so. serious real quick. That's the only thing I'm worried about. You know. They want to? He? I don't know. So he's, he's so quiet, you can't tell what he's thinking. He never talks. Like, he doesn't say a full sentence at one time. No, watch out for those guys. <laughs> I'll tell you, if they're not saying anything, there's probably nothing going on behind there. You think so? Man, they're wearing his. I don't know, he could be real smart. But intellectuals are up there.
He said he'd learned it all in the Navy. He'd seen the world, sailed the seven seas, seen Bangkok and Venice. She said she knew Pomona well. And then, Michael, the other night, I was telling him about it, and he got out the phone book. He was going to try to find his last name for me. We looked up Italian names, but I couldn't recognize any of them. Did he know? just tell you and you didn't write it down? Yeah, he told me his, his first name's Michael, but uh -huh. his last name he told me, and I didn't try to remember. He told me where he worked, but I don't remember the name of it. Oh, God, what a and drag. Fiber optics. How do you find a fiber optics company? What is it? I don't, know, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Something to do with sending sound. Light through cables to pick uh, up, to translate into sound. It's pretty smart guy. Esoteric. Yeah. Speaking of intellectuals. Yeah, smart guy. Uh-huh. And the first one in his family who graduated from high school. God. And I don't know what he's got. I guess he's got an MS. Well, how did you meet him? On the bus, just riding along. I picked to sit next to him. And first when he started to talk to me, I went, oh, fuck, don't you talk to me. Right. I'm so sick of this bullshit. And then, turned out, he's a nice, oh. He was cute. Yeah, he was cute. Mm -hmm. He was cute. He did all the right things for two full hours. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Yeah, yeah. And then I spent the whole weekend with Daryl trying to figure out he wants to talk about our future, and I'm just thinking, oh, shit. Where's future? that guy on the bus? Where's that guy on the bus? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bring him back. Yeah, really. It did make me realize how much I'm missing in terms of kind of an Aquarian sort of thing uh -huh. with this other guy. He, you know, Daryl's a nice guy. He's a really nice guy. Good father and a husband, but not exactly what I want. And they began to dream together. What kind of car did you buy? The kind of car you can get from an out of work steel worker. 1976 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Oh, Marshall. How much gas do those things take? 
Well, they told me it gets 19 on the road, but around town, you know, probably 12. Eight. And, well, maybe 8, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe 8. You know how much gas costs these days? Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. I probably how bought much? more gas than you have. You haven't had a car in how long? You I can't a afford a car. Well, oh, I don't Marshall. think I can afford enough to have one. Marshall, that's crazy. Oh, you've been in the city too long. No, it's nuts to go out and spend that much money. You've got to be kidding. Part of it was mine. You didn't even ask me. Well, I didn't have time. There's another guy was going to buy it if I didn't. It took me a couple hours in the pool hall to get the price down to that. Man, I am working two jobs. You're not working at all, and you just go out and spend all that money? Well, how am I going to get a job if I don't have a car? That's what I'm trying to tell you. It just takes too long on this kind of thing. It's too spread out. Oakland here, Berkeley, San Francisco, South San Francisco, maybe even down at the Bay. Lots of places I can get to once I got the job. But... I know, but a car like that, you're going to spend so much in gas. We can't, I can't afford that. I can't pay for the gas for it. Well, you just don't have to drive it much. That's the way you don't spend a lot of gas. But for $1,150, what kind of car can you buy that gets 30 miles to the gallon? Something small, something foreign. Right. You know? Beat up and wrecked and it's going to need a new engine. You talk about, what, even if it only gets 10 miles to the gallon, and it's 20 miles a gallon less than something else. $40, $50 a week. Take you a year. It's twenty-five hundred dollars. That's what you're going to have to spend more. Thirty-five hundred dollars to get something you can trust for a year. A cutlass. Well, you know who drives cutlasses? No. Well, I don't even want to know. <laughs> I don't believe this. What is that? That's a lot of money. I don't know where. Where did you get it all? Well, we had most of it. I had to take a little bit out of yours, but you know. You sit here all day drinking beer, and you go out and buy a car. I can't believe. You didn't even make dinner for me. I just got back about 20 minutes. This is how many beers I've had, a beer and a half before you got here. Coors. And, well, of course. Of course. Coors. What's wrong with that? What should I be drinking? You Something. know who makes Coors? Oh, we're going to hear all that Adolf Coors again and all his low consciousness stuff. Is that really still in the news? It's not in the news. You should just know about it. You shouldn't buy that stuff. What should I buy? Something Swiss or something, you know, where I don't know the guy that made it? Yeah, I hope you don't know that guy. Charlie Anheuser, is he better or something like that? I mean, oh, how many? Oh, this is crazy. Everything. You don't do anything, and then you go out and do a dumb thing like that. Marshall, how did you do that? I don't understand. Well, it just seemed like the thing to do at the time. Marshall, you haven't been working since I've known you. You haven't held a job for three months. Well, uh, the kind of money I make when I'm working, I'll pay that car off and... What, yeah, but weeks? I am working two jobs, sometimes three jobs. I wear myself out, I get sick. And what, what could you do? You're blaming me for you getting sick? Yeah, I am. I There's make no you reason. sick, that's what you're trying to tell me. Yeah. That's exactly oh, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's great news. That's great it's news. It's no new news. You've known that for a long time. Well, look, I'm work, looking for work. You know I am. Yeah. Well, I told you what happened. Now, you know, the... Sitting here drinking beers all day and reading the paper. You didn't even fix dinner for me. Well, look, let's get the thing back on the subject. I don't want to hear all the old grievances. We'll just get around in circles. You'll be late for work. Let's get back to the car. Let's talk about the job, if that's what we got to talk about. I told you before, maybe I didn't make it clear enough. You know, you put yourself out on a plank, 32 stories up. and why Marshall, I don't give a goddamn about your fucking 32-foot plank. I don't care about it. Why don't you have a job now? Because I'm trying to tell you, that's what I do, is I go up there and I work high steel. And once you've fallen, even a little bit, it's only two floors, but still. The next time I have to go up there, it's not that easy. I mean, for one thing, when I go back up there, when I go apply for a job, I've got to say, I can go up there and I won't be afraid. I won't look at my feet. I won't listen for the sound of boards breaking. I can just walk out there and pitch them ribbons. you got to be fast and you got to be accurate. You can't be worried about stuff. For another thing... You always work in teams, and I my team's gone. I can't work with those guys again. I've got to go in off the street and say, hire me. I used to do it, but I'm an unknown to you. So that's not going to make it easy. It's going to take me a while to get a damn job. I mean, it just is. You've got to face that. But, Marshall, if you can't do that, then why don't you do something else? Well, I am trying to do something else. Look. Maybe I got the wrong car. Maybe I shouldn't have got a car. Who knows? But I've got this other thing cooking with the workman's cop. $100,000. As soon as I've got that, we can buy whatever car is right. Hi. Hi, Julie. Hi, Hi Marshall. How you uh, doing? Um, okay, Hi, Debbie. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm good. I was just You guys are just talking about the car. I was just thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Ye
have any dinner or anything? You want to go get some pizza or something? No, I just got home from work. Marshall bought a car. Oh, what kind of car did he get? A Cutlass. An Oldsmobile Cutlass. Oh, really? Yeah. How <laughs> <I know>. dumb. <laughs> yeah, dumb is right. Eight miles to the gallon or something like oh, that. No. You better sell that car, Marshall. I don't think it's a good idea. I can't believe it. He goes out and buys a car today from the unemployment line. Oh, yeah? Huh. Oh, God. That, what do they call that? Uh, impulse buying or something, huh? Yeah, that's what it was. Guy oh, yeah. wanted to sell it, so he bought it. What I'd like is a new car, you know? Like, yeah, like a new car. Like a rabbit or something. You, you show know, me a $1,000 rabbit. rabbit, and I'll buy it. But you just can't get anything these days because everybody wants the same thing you want, a little car, a sports car, how cute. Okay, so I buy what you can get. 60,000 miles, if it was a little rabbit, I'd have to buy a new engine. This way I can drive it for 100,000 miles, put oil in it, put gas in it. No big motor overhaul because the thing's made to run. Getting a wreck, look at all the dented cars out here, every other car is smashed. Marshall, you're, you're smashed. Sure you don't want to go get something to eat, some pizza or something? Yeah, why not? Okay, great. I'm starving. I haven't eaten anything since about 11.30 this morning. They made me go take an early lunch. Oh, let's go. Okay, great. <laughs> hey, Marshall, aren't you coming? I thought you had to go to work. had them filed and uh, they were um, appropriately processed by the by the court and uh, we had a feeling that the that the case would be uh, processed uh, uh, successfully but unfortunately we got the the word we got information uh, that your case has been completely declined well Marshall I, I'm really sorry but I, I must tell you that your case really had never had any merit and uh, you shouldn't feel bad. Shouldn't feel bad? I thought when we were talking before that, I mean, I can't go back and work. There must be, isn't there something? Well, I, I know, Marshall, I, and I really, uh, and I uh, appreciate your situation, and I sympathize with you, but there's just nothing, nothing that can be done. Uh, the problem is that your, your case is one of uh, only soft tissue. There are no objective findings. There's no physical injury that the doctors could find. It's only an injury to your uh, to your soft tissue, to your muscles, and that's just the way uh, that's the, just the way personal injury litigation is. Workman's comp cases require some sort of objective uh, fracture to a bone, uh, some sort of dislocation of uh, of the spine or of a bone or of a joint. Your case is there is absolutely nothing that showed up on X-ray. There's nothing that showed up on uh, any other kind of uh, of medical uh, testing, and uh, it's all subjective. But maybe I didn't make it clear. It's not only the, I mean, it's not only the bruises and the injuries. I got over most of those, but I can't work again up there in those high places. It's a matter of, I have to be fast. I have to be confident. I can't be looking at my feet, worrying about what's happening. Isn't there, there must be some kind of recourse for those kinds of things. It's been rejected. Rejected. I want to see Mr. Wright. Marshall, well, why don't you just have a seat? I'll go see if we can take care of that. Let me check with the secretary. Harriet, do you know if Rick uh, can see us? Yes, sir. Rick, Mr. Rowan wants to see you in his office. Is it possible? No, okay. Yeah, Mr. Rowan, he'll be there in a minute. Marshall, why don't you come this way? Mr. Wright's uh, available to see you. 
Why don't you come on right over here? Yeah. Rick, I wanted you to meet uh, Mr. Goddess. Uh, Mr. Goddess is the senior partner, Mr. Uh, Wright. Mr. Goddess, yes, indeed. It's good to see you. I've, I've heard a lot about I've you. I've heard a lot about you. I'd you at long last. Please, please sit down, sir. Harriet, Harriet, will you tell what's your name to get us three coffees? Yeah, thank you. Now, what are we here? Well, Mr. Goddess, uh, it was a great pleasure to meet you. My, my time is very limited this morning, and uh, I hope to see you again soon, really. Uh, Steve? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye, all. Good. Steve, I want to see him. Can you, you got time to come down to the Mission Rock Resort, the place where we had lunch and played the pinball machines? Oh, I know, look, but one way or the other, it's not going to matter. I've got to talk to you. I left the car there. Keys are on the coffee table. Can you be here in a half hour? Yeah, I know. Come on anyway, though. It's important. Okay, I'll see you. I was looking for work out of the shipyards, but there ain't nothing happening with the men out there. I gotta figure out what to do next. What can do? Every impulse I got says it's time for me to go. It's half time. Go? Go. Get out of here. Nothing's happening. Get out of here? Yeah. Where are you gonna go? I don't know. I'll straighten things out somewhere, but I can't do it here. Marshall, what about us? Well, that's what I'm worried about. That's what I gotta talk to you about. What I wanted you to go with me, but if you can't do that, I want to work something out so I can come back. We can get together when I've got stuff together. Marshall, I just can't go. I can't take off like that. 
I wonder how long it took the dinosaurs to figure out they were sinking into the mud. Oh, Marsh. Not till they tried to move, I'm dead. But I can't just leave everything. Leave what? what? You can get those jobs that's anywhere else. Six weeks, you'd have a job. Six weeks, I can get a job. You just gotta go. Where? Oh, Marshall. Trust me. Trust the road. Something like that. <sighs> I'm used to making money and spending it. I'm not used to worrying about it when I don't have it. Want me to just take off and go with you? Yeah, sure do. Just leave everything. Yeah. You can come back if it's wrong. You can pick it up again, but I know it's right. I'm sure of it. I've been thinking about it walking in the rain. I know it's right. Whether breaking But even was 
deceiving, and deceiving came to leaving, and the whole town just fell out of rhyme. I never did understand women. God knows I don't think I'm ever going to either, because I sure don't seem to be making any progress. But I don't think they understand men either, at least the ones I've met. Always seemed to me that every woman I got close to started wanting me to be something I wasn't, had never been, didn't ever want to be. Get a job, get a career, buy a house, stay put. It's just not me. Maybe someday, but. I'm not getting much closer to it. Julie wasn't any different. It's time to go Pack up a bag Walk out the door It's time to go It's time to go When the loving is gone And the feelings are wrong Honey, it's time to go It's time to go To jump on the road Leave all love behind It's time to go It's time to go Rolling wheels take all the feel, honey. It's time to go. When push came to shove, she was just like all the other women I've ever known. I was halfway out the door, and she changed her mind after saying she's never going to. Called up Dev, gave her the cats in 30 seconds and flew the coop with me. Can't figure it out. I tell you, I've never have understood women.
sweetheart. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here we are. Isleton's ninth best hotel. And all of Isleton's best bars. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. What a wild time out here. Close that one out. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Oh, Jesus, this is the only position I can be in right now. <laughs> I won't move for 30 days. <laughs> well, that's what you say uh, now. Uh, nope, three days. I'm not going anywhere. That's it. Like, right here. I like the place that much, huh? <laughs> I love this place. It's great. <laughs> Where did you find this place? It's uh -huh. wonderful. Add something to it, Joe. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Oh, Jesus. You know what I like best, though? What? Was it you trust me? You? Yeah, I do. This is fun. Yeah. It's good. and kind, obedient and cheerful, now it's all of those, but they're thrifty, they're brave, now they don't count, they're clean and they're reverent. do things. That's what makes me do things. There's no reason to do things otherwise. Love? Yeah. That's how you feel about me? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know, you know. Yeah, I guess I do. I just never felt like that before. sweet slip and slide, but still what makes me do what I do, because when I don't have it, then I'm not doing it. Yeah. 
I don't know. You know, sometimes I feel this incredible connection between the two of us. Yeah, it's sure there sometimes. And then, sometimes it's just gone. Then I, I feel like it could be there forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wanted this? No. Well, I know it when it's not there. That's when I know it. hasn't been there before ever. But it seems like it is now. Yeah. All the time.
And so they went starstruck, blinded by the light of love or something like it, believing things that only fools and angels should ever believe.
they look like you, sir. Young Ross. You have to get a boy or two in there, chop the wood, and he gets a little older. Yeah. You know, start him out on the kindling while I do that and stuff. You know, let him take it away from me as he gets older. Make him feel like he's doing something. Make me feel like I'm not. I kind of like that idea. Really? Rug wraps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seems like fun. Keep me uh, busy. <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> maybe we ought to do it. Yeah. I don't know. On a place like this, why not? Be good for them. You know? It might be good for us, too. Yeah. You know, I've been moving around all the time. You've been doing things I don't much care to be doing. Like settling down a little. Yeah. You have the center and all those things are supposed to be. Okay, let's do it. You want to? Yeah. Thanks yeah, for the idea. Be. Well, you can't just do it all of a sudden. I mean, well, you can't I'm, just... I'm willing to take however long it takes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that part's fun, too. <laughs> you think so, huh? I heard tell. Yeah. Could be good. Yeah, I guess one more. We'll just get a couple each. I don't know how many you want. Of course, I guess we don't have to figure that one out either right away. No, I think that'll come if <laughs> it does. <laughs> Probably just when you know when to stop. <laughs> yeah, I don't want any more. You think we've got a place around here? Yeah, it's getting on to late enough of the year. There'll probably be some turn up. Really? I wouldn't want to try it in the summer. But get one now and keep it going to be somewhere else. Uh-huh. If not, there's a lot of them now. In here? Yeah, I think so. Doesn't it get cold in winter, though? No, it gets wet. Then what did you do? Well, anything I could think of. Really? Yeah. You think you should go to Montana? Rugrats? Pretty serious stuff. Yeah, life. About time, don't you think, though? I guess so. What do you think? I know it is. Can't wait any longer. Yeah. Time's right. Place is right. We're right, you and me. This is the main chance. I don't want to wait for the next one. It's been a long time getting to this one. You've been wandering around a lot. Yep, seen all I need to of that. You sure you want to take on a life like that? Yeah. You know what I mean, Marshall? I gotta have a house. Yeah, sure, Julie, I can understand that. But we don't have to do anything until I get squared away. I mean. Look, Marshall, I don't want to hear any more butts. You gotta get a job. You gotta hold it. All right? Look, Julie, I said I'll do it. And I'll do it. I love you. Just the technical thing. It's 
like we're the only ones out in the train, doesn't it? It's a very good idea with gas pumps, they didn't have to come out here and get wet for nothing. I'm just gonna leave it running. Okay. I'll be back as soon. Get wet. <laughs> No, I always got him in the rear room. Can you hold on? One in real.
Thank you. 